Hey, what's up everybody? Fuller here. Thanks so much for checking out the channel. In today's video, it's going to be a short video and it's not going to be a full deep dive, but I want to show you how to control meta sounds with uh, objects in the blueprint via line trace. And it looks kind of like this. All right, so I'm inside the game here. Meta sounds, the game is running, meta sounds running. I'm going to click on this fader here and I'm going to use the L key to turn it up and down. Pretty cool. Over here, I got a little high pass filter. This is all controlling the same meta sound. Super cool, huh? Um, now, I'm doing all this because I'm in the process of building this giant mega synth this mono fully functional chromatic mono synth steampunk mono synth all in unreal with meta sounds and stuff and and it's going to be huge and awesome and that's going to be coming out in a little while probably a couple weeks i'll start putting out some videos on that in the finishing pro process now but along the way of building that i had to figure out all kinds of things with communicating with the meta sound from the game and all that stuff. So I just wanted to show you uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you this blueprint. I'm gonna show you the components, how it all works together. We're not gonna build it. We'll do that in a future video, but I do wanna just show it to you and maybe it'll open up a few ideas that you have about what you've been wanting to do with meta sounds. So um, let's look at the game here. I've got this, this panel right here is not hooked up yet. I got a pitch knob, got a bandwidth knob. That's not hooked up yet. Right now all I have are these two hooked up. We've got basically uh, some panels here and these are just kind of like eye candy, steampunk uh, prototype. Here's what we're really controlling here. These are two components. Uh, we've got the BQ, uh, BEQ uh, blueprint uh, EQ handler six and then uh, three. These are all, again, these are just prototypes nothing to write home about um, and then uh, let's put those panels back because they're cool um, so what's happening is here when we click the mouse uh, we're hitting a line trace and that line trace is coming up with what uh, component we're actually hitting okay what, what object inside the component we're hitting here we're hitting the EQ low pass it should be high pass, but I, I labeled it wrong uh, uh, when I was first starting. It started with a low pass, but then I wanted to do a high pass because it sounds cooler. Um, and then, so here, volume, okay? So simple line trace hitting that, but where all of the real stuff is happening is inside the blueprint. So we're, all we're using is we're using one meta sound, which is just a wave player, and we've got some input variables. We got pitch, EQ, low pass, uh, bandwidth volume um, now these names are super critical uh, if you don't know why go back and watch my meta sound uh, 101 videos um, then uh, we've got the component itself which is this um, uh, I just made this line here just to have a reference this is the knob this knob is called volume this is really important because this is gonna get stored in a hit component variable so when your mouse hits that it's gonna store this in a variable so and that variable is what we're gonna use to communicate with the meta sound so uh, let's look in the blueprint because everything is really happening here in the blueprint first thing we have to do is we have to set up a line trace again I'm not gonna build this from scratch we might do that in a future video I mean I'll definitely do that when I show you how I built the steampunk mono synth which will be coming soon which by the way if you if you're interested in watching those when they come out probably a couple weeks go ahead and like and subscribe hit the bell button you'll get notified when new videos come out um, but we're all just learning meta sounds together that's what we're doing right now I'm, I'm exploring this just like you are um, and and uh, Unreal 5.2 just dropped some new meta sound features. Aaron posted on LinkedIn, uh, I think yesterday or today, um, some of the cool things with uh, meta sounds in 5.2, but we're still in 5.1. Um, here's the mouse uh, line trace logic. Basic mouse, uh, basic mouse, basic line trace. We've got this line trace by channel node. Um, we are triggering this on the left mouse button. Uh, we are getting the mouse location. This is important. So wherever the mouse is on the screen, it's going to convert that to a literal literal world space where it is in space. And uh, based off the Git player controller, then we're going to make this line trace 10,000 units, and that's going to send a line out. Um, and actually, let's turn on debug for duration. And uh, we are going to, um, let's go just look at this real quick. So wherever I hit this, 
boom, you see that's where the line's hitting and you see the name, it's given us the name because we put that over here after the line trace, we break out this hit component, the out, the hit, the out hit results. We break this hit result. Then right here is what we want, the hit component. This is the component that we're actually hitting, okay? Not the actor, but the component inside of the actor. Then once we hit it, we're setting this variable right here, hit component. This is just a variable of the primitive uh, component type. And so what that's doing is whatever I hit inside of here, boom, I hit this. It's storing that in this hit component. That's critical here because now we know what we hit and we can take the rest of the logic and do stuff based on whatever it is we hit. So we don't wanna move the volume fader if we're trying to adjust EQ. So if you hit the EQ fader, it will only adjust the EQ fader, but we're using the same logic. Um, that's just a print string. So now, once we get the hit component, the component that we hit, we're gonna use that to set up a bunch of booleans. And this isn't done, but you'll, you'll get the idea here. So we're taking the hit component, we're getting the object name. Now this is important. The, um, over here, the display name is what it's actually called, like the actual um, name of the 3D object. But the object name is what we named it in here. And this is critical. So we named this volume, right? Now what that's telling us is, okay, get that name. So we're gonna hit whatever we hit, what's that name? Well, in this case, it's volume. So then what I do is I check these against strings. Is it equal to this? Meaning is that the name of what we hit? If not, is that? Is that, oh, and then look, volume. If volume is the name of what we hit, then set is volume fader to true. Here's our is volume, we, we just made a variable. We got is volume, is bandwidth, is pitch bend. We're gonna have booleans basically for every object that we wanna move and use to control. Once we set that boolean, is volume fader, when we hit L and K, L and K is gonna control everything. We want two buttons to control up or down or rotary, whatever. So what this is gonna do, this logic here is gonna, here's the EQ logic. It's gonna ask, is it an EQ fader? Is the name of the hit component EQ fader? No, it's not. Okay, then let's go false. False means it comes down here. Is it volume fader? Oh, yes, it is, because when we hit that component, it set the volume fader to true. So now that we know it's the volume fader, we're gonna go into this logic. And basically all this is, this is a timeline to animate the knob or in this case fader and again um, if you go back and watch my how to build a uh, mono synth you'll see how we use the lerp to animate keys we're doing the same thing here this timeline is literally animating when i hit l it animates this to a different location okay regardless of what it's doing with the meta synth it's just animating this button up and down and that's important for visual feedback however what we want to and so what we did is we animated that so if it's named e, uh, volume fader the hit component we're going to get the x location and then as we lerp we're going from zero to 350 and back and that's raising the fader how much we want if you want it to go higher change this number higher now that's for the animation now what we want to do is we want to use it to communicate to the meta sound which is here, again, we want to change this fader with that variable. So we come back in here after it animates it or while it's animating it, then what we do is we get the hit component down here, we get the object name. What's the name of the object? This is important. In this case, the name of the object is exactly volume, which exactly corresponds to this input variable. If this is, I'm, I'm talking fast because again, this isn't a deep dive, I just wanna show this to you. Um, so um, a lot of this stuff you can learn how to do if you go back and watch my Metasounds 101 video or my Metasounds synth series, okay? So assuming you know how to do all that, when, when we come out here, so we get that name, it's a volume. Then now we're getting the reference to the meta sound. Remember how we do this. We click on the actual meta sound and then in the blueprint we right click and we create a reference to it, which is here. Then over here, you can get audio component. And what that allows us to do is now it allows us to tell that meta sound stuff. In this case, what we're gonna do, if it's the volume fader, we're going to set the float parameter right here. 
volume is a float parameter. We're going to set that, but we're not gonna set it from zero to 350 because that would blow your speakers out. So what we're doing is we're clamping that. Zero is zero, but then all the way to 350 is one. So all you take zero to 350 and you're clamping that. So whatever's in between that is actually zero to one. So the number it's outputting is somewhere between zero and one. So now this, when I animate this fader, it's, it's, it's changing that variable inside the meta sound uh, to go up and down. And what that gives us is that gives us a perfect combination of animation and meta sound, uh, meta sound, meta sound, meta sound control. Super awesome. Same with the high pass. Now, when I click over here, remember, hit component variable changes, and then we go through that logic. In this case, it's actually going to go through is EQ low pass. This says low pass because I labeled it wrong. It should say EQ high pass. I started with the low pass, but then I changed it and forgot to change the name. But the important thing is in the meta sound, it's labeled low pass. So that's um, communicate. So th then when I hit that button, it's going to change that number based on this lerp up here, uh, which is our logic for, um, where is it at? There it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yes, there it is. It's going to go 0 to 350, but it's going to output 0 to 3000. So now instead of, z because that's the frequency that it's, manipulating our meta sounds done let's start that i should have looped it but i didn't so now this is going from zero to three thousand which is a super narrow high pass all the way to nothing which is full eq and the same with the volume so anyways i know that was fast um but i wanted to show you this because i know when you see this you'll start going oh that's how i do that and that's how i do that and again i'll, I'll do a full walkthrough of this once I finish my steampunk synthesizer, because that thing is going to be sick. Let me tell you right now, it's 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 going to be intense. It's going three oscillator, five octaves, uh, LFO, uh, uh, an amp, uh, uh, VCO filters, all of the de uh, delay. Re it's going to have the the whole shebang. We're going to be able to really create some very musical sounds with it. Um, so that's coming. That's in the works. So make sure you uh, like and subscribe and then click the bell. That'll notify you when new videos are coming out. Anyways, I know this one was a fast one, but thanks so much for checking out the website. Go, uh, feel free to go back and check out some of my other videos to get caught up on the meta sounds and all that stuff. Look forward, uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.